Welcome to our segment on the pool. In Cubase, the pool is where you view and manage your project files. You can open the pool in a few different ways. One option is to select the Open Pool button on the toolbar, or select Pool, Open Pool, and the pool window opens. You can also, let's say, select two events on the project page and select Audio, Find Selected in Pool. This will open the pool window and the selected media will be highlighted. There is a shortcut, Control P, and that does the same thing. At the top of the pool window are a toolbar and column headings. The information line at the bottom of the pool window contains the following information. The number of files in the project, the number of currently used files, the total size of your project, and the number of external files in your project. By default, Cubase creates three folders here. Audio, and this contains audio clips and regions. The video folder is the default folder for video files. Remember that Cubase doesn't copy video files to the project folder. Instead, it refers to video files on your hard drive. If you want your video files to be inside the project folder, you've got to copy them manually and then import them into your project after. Or use the prepare archive function under the pool. We'll be looking at this in more detail later in this video. The last folder is our trash folder. This folder is not part of the Windows Trash folder. When you delete files from this folder, they're not recoverable, so use carefully. You can delete files from your pool work in a few different ways. You can highlight a clip in the audio folder, and then press the Delete or Backspace buttons on your keyboard, or select Edit, Delete. If the clip is currently used in your project, Cubase will ask you if you want to remove these events from the project. Click Remove. A new dialog window will give you two options, Remove from the Pool, We'll remove the clip from the pool, but the file will still be on your hard drive. So this is an action that can be reversed with an undo, like Control Z, or by selecting Edit Undo. The trash options, on the other hand, will move the, the clip to your trash. However, you're still able to use the undo options at this point. To empty your trash folder, double-click on the trash folder, or select Pool, Empty Trash. The Erase options will permanently remove files from your hard drive, and you won't be able to recover these, so be careful. The Remove from Pool option will remove the clip from the pool, but still keep the file on your hard drive. The Audio folder, which contains audio clips and regions, is where we're going to go to click a new folder. Right-click, Create Folder, Name it Vocal. You're going to move all of your vocals to this folder.
Now let's set this folder as the record folder. This means that newly recorded clips will be stored in this folder. Right click, set pool record folder. In the status column, you can see that it's now listed as our record folder. folder. Information about clips and regions is displayed in the various pool columns. The media column contains folders, regions, and clips. The used column shows the number of times the clip is used in the project. The status column displays the clip's status. Record, for example, means that this is the current pool record folder. The red and gray waves in the black square show which clips have had processing applied. We'll be covering this topic later in this course. The R in the red square indicates that a clip has been recorded in the currently open section of a project. X represents external files or files collated outside the audio folder of the project. A question mark appears in the status column when files happen to be missing. For example, if you deleted them or renamed them. One way to prevent this from happening is to take care of your renaming of files from within the pool. Left click on the file name, click again, in this case, if you simply double click it, you're going to open your sampler editor. Go ahead and rename the file. If you have any issues with missing files, Every time you open your project, Cubase is going to prompt you with a Resolve Missing Files dialog box. If you renamed a file, click Locate and then choose the new file. If the file still has the same name but was moved or the folder with this file in it was renamed, the folder button here will be your choice. The search options will help you to find missing files. In fact, all files with the same name. Or you can simply click close and just open the project. The path column gives us information about the location of files. And here is our missing file. file format and the date the file was created are shown here. This date doesn't necessarily represent the time when the original file was created. The image column displays a graphical representation of the waveforms. The origin time this is basically the start position where a clip was recorded originally. You can change the value in this column, double click, and insert a new value. Now let's insert a clip in the project window. Select your desired track. And a clip. Right click, insert into project at origin. The same function is available under the pool menu as well. Insert at cursor works in the same manner. Instead of the time of origin, the clip will be placed at the current cursor position. The info column shows the sample rate, bid depth, 
type of channels, stereo, mono, and the length of the clip. By checking this checkbox, you are activating musical mode. Musical mode is required to work with audio warp features in Cubase. In order to activate musical mode, Cubase has to know the tempo of the audio file. This is why if the tempo column displays three question marks and you try to activate musical mode, Cubase will prompt you with a dialog window asking you to enter the tempo of the audio file. Now what if you don't know the tempo? Well, Cubase does have a solution for this problem too. The Audio Tempo Definition Tool. We're going to cover more on this subject later in this course. Column headings can be resized, moved, and shown or hidden. You can sort clips in the pool by the number of parameters, such as name, type, etc. The first button on the toolbar, as you already know, is the Hide Show Info line. The next one is Play. You select a clip and press the Play button. To stop the Playback button, click it again. If you don't hear anything, check Devices, VST Connections, Studio, Device Port Column, The most likely reason is that your audition channel is routed to the wrong port. Next is our loop button. If activated, it causes clips to play indefinitely. The volume fader here is linked to the volume fader of the audition channel in the mixer panel. The search function lets you search your entire computer, a particular folder, or the pool itself. Type the full or partial file name in the name field. And you can even just type a few letters here, actually. For example, I'm going to type two letters, D and I. Press Search. And Cubase finds for me every clip which contains the letters DI in their names. You can move and resize columns in your search results window. You can also sort files virtually by every characteristic. Name, bit depth, sample rate, etc. Right-click. Search Media. This will open the same window, but in a, in a separate window. The Import button. This is another important button, and it opens your Import Media dialog window. The same window is accessible under Pool, Import Media. Or you can right-click import medium. Navigate to the location of your audio or video files. Choose one or more files. Now if you're not sure which file or version of the files you need, audition them right here. If more than one file is selected, the last file name in the file name slot indicates which file information is represented.